All right, so as we go up the ladder of complexity, this next uh, case study is really about, okay, you used it uh, to make uh, a better RFP faster, and that got you a million dollar contract that just wouldn't have been possible before. Bravo, love it. That is such a great use case. You know, once you've finished practicing on your kids, do it for things like RFPs, grants, uh, you know, sales letters. I use it to sort of thank my clients. But what, what Amy's gonna share now is kind of the next level up, right? Which is she's actually using it as part of the services that she provides to her clients. And so she, in essence, is getting paid to be an AI guru, an AI expert. And what's really, really cool about Amy is that she's doing it, um, you know, in a low res, low, no code sort of way, you, you know, building it uh, to start um, on Google Sheets um, and then has a technical team behind her to build out more sophisticated applications. But she is so fearless about just what we call low resolution experimentation. It's one of the reasons uh, I find her so inspiring. So um, this is where she lives, is she's living in the AI enhanced automation space, um, you know, using tools as simple uh, as Google Sheets and then building out very, very basic applications leveraging AI. It's a much more sophisticated uh, use case, but it's probably the single visit, biggest business opportunity there is for those of you on today's uh, session, because it's an area where you don't need, as she'll show you, a whole lot of technical support or knowledge uh, to get started. Um, you know, Amy is the CEO uh, of Products to Profits. Um, she, this is a company that basically takes you from a product idea to market and to the marketplace and ex and, and marketing it. Um, and she's sort of your companion uh, on that full journey. And um, Products to Profits um, is really focused on e-commerce, direct to consumer and B2B sellers. And it's really about taking your idea or helping you develop that idea and turning it into a thriving product powerhouse. And they just take you soup to nuts through that whole process. And so there's a couple of different ways that Amy is using uh, AI uh, at Products to Profits. Some of them are to market her own business and some of them are to serve her clients. Over to you, Amy. You know, I am so excited about this today, Dan. Can you hear me? Is sound coming through? Okay. Awesome. I see the thumbs up. You know, AI is something that I stepped into a little bit gradually over a few years and then about a year ago in a really very intentional way. Um, I've been around the tech product space for a long time with I, internet of things type of products. And so AI is a natural evolution of that. How we're using AI within our company, it falls in these two buckets of helping clients sell physical products. And as a consulting agency, which is what we are selling B2C. So some of our, our clients are really early stage entrepreneurs. So they might not even really feel like they have a business established yet, but they have a great idea there. And then we sell B2B, which is more in the, oh, you've got a product already out in the market and now something's gone horribly wrong and you need to fix it fast. So we're working in the online space, the offline space, television, shopping channels, Amazon. So, so we have overview in how products are being sold right now in the United States. Crazy statistic. But did you know that only 20.8% of physical product sales happen online right now? 2023 statistic for you. 20.8% are online. And everything is being massively influenced by AI. So when it comes to helping clients sell their physical products, the list of where we're using it and how it's getting it is pretty extraordinary. Product listings, descriptions, benefit text, taking features of a product, turning them into benefits that are compelling for the particular audience. Sales funnel creation, website elements, 
we haven't seen a full web page come out really great, fabulous without being touched. Um, FAQs, both generating what the FAQ would be and as well as positioning the answer in the brand voice for the product. So that's kind of hot. And then another one that we're really liking is one-to-one -one emails to large volumes um, buyers. So we have products that have sold to Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, Target, Macy's, Zales, Helper, you, you know, it's a long list. And the Amazon number one um, small business of the year was a client of ours from kitchen table to all the way into that award. So one-on-one -on -one emails to large buyers are a pretty high stakes game for some of our clients. And we have one client right now, um, Christine, she's actually using a little ninja piece with her one-on-one -on -one emails. And she's booking appointments with very busy surgeons as she's launching her product for post-surgery recovery. So it really does work. And there's a few specifics behind there. I don't have time to go into it today. And I'm happy to, to answer questions about that. Cell sheets. Cell sheets are a handout leave behind for a trade show or like a PDF that you're going to send to a buyer when you really want to focus their attention on how to buy from you wholesale. So again, kind of high stakes, right? It's the thing that a Walmart buyer might see straight out of the gate rather than even going to your website where they might see more consumer facing content. If you're doing what's called omni-channel where you're selling direct to consumer and you want to add wholesale, you're going to need a sell sheet most likely. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to just jump in real quick. You know, this is this whole left column here of helping clients sell physical products is like almost like a great list for every company in the world of ways that you can immediately use this to help your business. Um, one of the favorite use cases for folks who sell physical products who have SKUs is to do product descriptions. Like the bane of all of our existences is these product descriptions, uh, landing pages, uh, Amazon selling pages. Um, we actually uh, spoke to a business that was able to cut in half the amount of time it, it takes uh, to take to build those product pages and to bring it in house rather than having a uh, out, outsourced copywriter do it. Fantastic high ROI use case immediately. But what makes Amy really special is the right hand column. So I wanted to bring you over to there <laughs> and talk about okay, you're killing it on your marketing. You're also helping them market their businesses better. But now you're doing some next level stuff in actually getting yourself invaluable to these clients through some next level AI stuff. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So some of the things from the left column apply to the right column, okay? All the social media content pieces, every, we have one setup that we do through ChatGPT and some custom prompts that we have built that will actually take the company information, the product information, and it'll pull it all the way through into a social media calendar format. It'll tell us what post, what day, all of those. It'll actually even recommend the video talking points and the images that would go in an Instagram story and how long each of them should come up. So we use that that we're helping clients with also in the consulting side. So there is a slide I'm going to show you in a second here that's about developing program components and bonuses. We have a really powerful example of how that happened. And it helps to handle objections before they happen. Also slide deck creation. I did a talk, I had literally two hours to create the whole thing and an offer. And this was back in the summer. The whole thing was done within two hours. Um, client meeting notes, transcription. Oh my gosh, we use a couple of different services. The one I'm liking right now is Grain for recording client meeting notes as the Zoom is happening, it auto transcribes, it's really brilliant. Brand voice documents. This is something that I think every brand should have. It's similar to what a custom instruction might be, but it's way more comprehensive. And you can actually use like ChatGPT or some of the other AX tools that are more advanced to help evaluate how your current blog posts are sounding. Are you on track or not, right? Once you have the avatars. 
surfacing insights within your market, which is a really important piece. And there's a new thing we are in the process of creating as a collaboration that is actually going to help with the business structures and organization charts to redistribute team tasks. And it creates an implementation plan of how you do that. <gasps> so I'm gonna show you a little bit about that too. Can you pop to the next slide? Okay, so when you're moving into AI, it's really important, like a couple of people have said here, that you have to train the AI tool on the elements. Who's it, who it's for, the role you want the AI to answer you from. And so some minimum viable uh, product kind of questions. What's the intended outcome of the prompt or the tool that you're going to build, the thing that you want to achieve or have your clients achieve, right? Like, what are you trying to cause and who you're solving it for? What are their needs? And our recommendation when you're going to start creating a tool is that you look for the thing that you do over and over, right? If it, you're going to do something one-off, it's probably not worth it to develop a, a little custom tool. And I'm not saying these tools are expensive. We have one that we've built that was literally free to build. We have another one that will cost us about $50. So that's really cool. You're going to create your MVP starting in a Google Doc, test your prompts using ChatGPT or uh, Claude, Bard, you name it, it all works. And then you clean it up until the output's useful and then move into using something like FormWise to create a front-end form. And it, it has your AI prompt behind it. So I gave you some systems that we've used and really enjoy. If you're selling one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the to especially to B2B, that system in the bottom, Crystal Nose, is fantastic. And I highly recommend that everybody take a look at it. Metricool for social media uh, scheduling has AI features built in. We also use Canva. So we have a pretty robust tech stack, depending on what we need. And Dan, like you were talking about, the tools are evolving so fast. And we were talking about that last night with somebody that it feels like drinking from a fire hose, right? There are thousands and thousands, I think it was 14,000 AI tools as of March, and we're way past March. So next slide. Yeah, so I just wanted to pause for a sec. Um, other panelists, if you guys have questions, you feel free to jump in. Uh, you're gonna actually meet Gary Riger in a sec, uh, and he's actually someone who built one of those 14,000 tools. Um, part of the reason there's so many uh, is because they're relatively easy to build. Um, and what I love about what you're saying is Right now, what AI is best at is do like the tools that tend to work the best do one thing really well. Um, and and generally speaking, like look at your business and what the one thing you need done is and see if there's a tool that does it. Um, is is a and and if it's a common enough use case, if you build the tool, you might be able to sell it because there are probably other people who need it as well. The word MVP means minimal viable product. An MVP is the very, very first version of something that you're a little embarrassed about so that you can collect data from your users about whether it actually works. Exactly. So I wanted to really illustrate something when it comes to using AI for social media or for any of your marketing. The switching perspectives makes a very, very big difference. So this is a fun example we, we ran for a client and she sells cat toys that have catnip in them. They're really awesome. They're high design. It's a company called Crochet Kitty. You can check them out. But when you just put in like, hey, tell me about catnip, right? You get these things like catnip is known to have potential stress relief effects in cats. Really pretty boring. If you write it as a vet, say you're putting something in LinkedIn and the perspective, you change that. Discover the therapeutic events of catnips for a cat's mental and physical well-being. So it's a little more um, specific, a little more medically sounding. But if you're writing for Instagram, first off, you can have it put all the emojis in place. I love this one. Cat nip, more like cat yip, right? Very different content, all from the same first prompt with just the change of tone of voice. 
So then what we would do on something like this Instagram list, you can copy and paste that over into a Google sheet. You can have 60 of them, spin them out however you want, funny, serious. And then you upload them to Canva as a bulk upload and it'll create Instagram story images for you in literally like five minutes and you'll have days of content. So next. Okay. So this is a direct to consumer toolkit. Remember I mentioned when you're building out and developing a program, you can use AI tools to really help you to make the sale and overcome objections. So in this, the multi-channel marketing machine is a program that we have for physical products. And we used AI to explore the buying beliefs, to look at the possible objections, brainstorm solutions, naming descriptions for this digital toolkit that we wanted to offer. So from the, hey, we want to offer a digital cool toolkit to content able to be put on our website, it was 60, sorry, 90 minutes from that moment of thought to it being implemented. Now, then we still had to build out the tools, but you can see the titles are really good. You know, your essential checklist for maximizing product sales. Chat GPT prompts for irresistible descriptions, websites, and listings. Like, these are sexy. I don't know about you, but this, this kind of is like people going like, oh, what are those? And the quality of the tool itself that we built on the back end of things is there as well. So look at it for developing your content for the, the nuts and bolts of programs. So I, I'm gonna just jump in. You know, one of the highest use cases of ChatGPT and Bing AI and, and some of these generative chat tools is strategy. Um, and so that's what this is. This is an example, not of like doing the actual work of drafting an email uh, or even drafting a portion of an RFP. This is actually giving you uh, an incredibly creative strategy. The, the challenge to using ChatGPT in this way is the prompt is complex. You need to give it a lot of really specific information to make it work. We have a whole micro lesson on uh, complex prompting. Um, and uh, we actually, one of our partners is Robotic Marketer, which does a whole two hour discovery session with 200 questions that builds into this massive mega prompt and then spits out uh, a uh, customized, uh, you know, specific marketing, uh, 60 page marketing strategy for you. But this is, this is a just beautiful example of a value you can provide to your customer. She can do this on her own. It just would take her longer and she probably would have missed a couple of ideas that it came up with. Yeah, and what we were doing is we actually explored the background of the beliefs and what would the experience get to be for the the person in that program, right? It's a group mastermind. So, so it wasn't just like, hey, give me 12 topics. No, it was, 12 topics that speak to these beliefs that would overcome these things that we can legitimately serve on, right? So if you're interested, we have a master prompt for physical products and I'm giving it to you. So you can check that QR code or go to the URL. It will take you to the same page and you can get it there. We'll send it over to you in an email and you'll get it later today. Yeah. So, so John, if you could include this, um, products to profits.com slash AI for products in the, in the chat. Uh, I definitely encourage all of you to use it. Um, and uh, Derek Chan asked, uh, how do you use an AI tool? Uh, how do you know whether it's a virus or a scam? Um, one of the easiest answers to that is BizHack has assembled a resource list where we list dozens and dozens of vetted tools that we you know, put our trust in. So um, John, if you could also include uh, in the chat, the resource document, uh, the, the spreadsheet with those lists of tools, uh, I would start with that list of tools. It'll keep you busy probably for the rest of your life. Yeah, and you know what, I'll drop the link uh, to that web page in the chat too in just a few minutes. But so this last case study, I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly. It's, this is a collaboration between um, Julie and Pina and I she has the Business and Health Summit. You can actually see the URL for that down below. But 
her people needed to reassign her business owner clients need to reassign a whole series of tasks to lighten up their workload. So we're collaborating because we both need this tool. And so we started with a concept brief that's a Google Doc. And what we're using AI for is to prioritize the team tasks. They get, they're entered into a table by the business owner, right? And I'll show you a screenshot of that in a second. And then we are having AI decide which tools to move to other people and looking for who maybe they should be moved to and recommend a plan of action by priority, value to the company and risk to the company. So looking at your team and your organizational structure and going, okay, how do we get the right people in the right seat? Okay. So I don't know about you, but that's always my question is business owner who has a team. Is everybody in the right seat? And so being clear on the input that was needed is a really big tip when you're generating a minimum viable product for something like this. Clarity on what the output should be or needs to look like or do. The other tip would be, how do you want users to interact with the tool? How easy does it need to be for them to fill it out? And how do you want to feel, how do you want them to feel, sorry, after they use your tool, right? It, because that gets to the user experience. I can see Gary nodding along. He's like, yes, right? How do you want people to feel afterwards is important. So on the next slide, Dan, we've got a couple of screenshots here. So this is the data form on the left where a business owner would enter the tasks. Now, remember, this is rough. This is in process. You are seeing things that were created literally last Thursday and are being refined tomorrow. So the list of tasks, I use me as one of them. I'm not a good bookkeeper. So on the quality, my rating is a three if I'm your bookkeeper, right? It's not my strength. Awesome when it comes to like product strategy, get your product sold, that stuff. You want me sitting in the nap seat, right? So from this on the left, through a series of prompts, this on the right side is the start of one of the action plans, right? to reevaluate the tasks, all of this. What I really want you to know as the takeaway is that from the, hey, let's create the Google Doc and thinking through all the inputs and outputs to having functional action plans starting to come out the other side with four hours. And for the people that are going to use the tool, it will literally take them about 20 minutes to go from data on their about their team to an action plan on how to move people around. That to me is pretty mind blowing. I don't know about you, it's like that is spectacular. So this is, is a collaboration and the collaboration is all being in, done inside of Google Doc. This is all right now, Google Doc, chat GPT, then it'll have a form on the front end and a hidden prompting and we'll be done. The whole development is gonna cost about, I don't know, $50. This is so impressive to me. Uh, Amy Winslow, you are a magician. Uh, what I would say is, what's really inspiring about this is that she started with a business problem, which is right person, right seat. For those of you that follow EOS and Traction, you know, do you have the right people in the right seat? And this is a tool uh, to help you figure that out and then come up with specific next actions to get uh, RPRS in your company. Uh, next up, we're going to hey, talk. Hey, Dan, Dan, there's one quick question I just want to address. I see it in the chat about the custom instructions. So our prompts actually can be embedded as custom instructions in chat, chat GPT. So yes, you can adapt this. There's just limitations on the number of characters. So we really recommend maybe a truncated version for chat GPT custom instructions, and then a longer version saved off separately. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Amy.